In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Today we hear the Gospel of the Good Samaritan. I'd like to start first with a little bit of a geography lesson, if you don't mind. Because the context of this Gospel, there's a lot of meaning that comes with this journey between Jerusalem and Jericho. A lot of you, I'm sure, from that have roots in the Holy Land know this. But Jerusalem, the Mount of Olive, which faces the direction towards Jericho, is 2,600 feet above sea level. And Jericho is 700 feet below sea level. And that's within a distance, just barely 30 miles. So it's a journey that is very steep, descending into Jericho from Jerusalem. And it's also known to be a very dangerous road. There are a lot of cliffs. It's a desert, rocky region. And it was known an area to be dangerous to travel, especially you wouldn't travel on your own from Jerusalem to Jericho. And there will always be robbers in the caves and, and hills around that area. So our Lord uses this image, this journey from Jerusalem to Jericho to make a point. We hear today, a lot of people use this phrase, the Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan. And it's usually in the context of us trying to be a Good Samaritan. But in the understanding of the church, and when you look at the church fathers and how they read this gospel, that's not their focus. Here we see a lawyer, a lawyer that comes to Christ to test him. Now this lawyer isn't like a lawyer today, so if you're any lawyers out there, don't feel bad. This is not about you. Uh, this lawyer is a religious lawyer. He's a lawyer of the law of God. And he comes to Christ to test him. Now Christ's answer to him was, well, you know the law. You're a teacher of the law. And he has failed because, because he's a lawyer of the law of God. He should have recognized who he was talking to. He should have recognized who Christ was and should have received him and accepted him as his Lord. He should have known that the person he was speaking to was Emmanuel, God with us. But he failed. And this lawyer is like the priest and the Levi who are walking down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They are men who were supposed to know the law of God but failed to act on it. Seeing a man who was beaten and stripped and left for dead on the side of the road and just walked past him. And they were walking towards Jericho. They were not walking towards the heavenly kingdom. They weren't walking towards God, towards Jerusalem but they were walking away from it. And that's one of the warnings that Christ wants to give us in this gospel. <clears throat> Direction in which we, were, we are traveling in. There is nothing that is neutral in life. Everything we do, everything we say, every thought we have is either gonna be in the direction of Jerusalem or direction of Jericho. So, who is the man that was attacked? The man that was attacked is us. We are humanity, Adam, that fell from the garden, that went in towards the world, towards Jericho. And because we've separated ourselves from the confines of Jerusalem, we were exposed. We were exposed to attacks of the demon and were attacked and beaten and left for dead. So, who we, who we were left with the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan is Christ our God. He, he is the one who came down from His seat in heaven to come save humanity, finding us beaten and left for dead, and comes, and what does He do? First, by descending into Jericho, that's Christ descending into the world, becoming one of us, 
like we will be celebrating the Incarnation Christmas coming up soon. He takes oil and wine and, and heals and puts them on the, the wounds of the man who is left dead. The fathers of the church teach us that the oil and wine are symbols of the sacraments of the church that God gives us for the healing of our soul and body. So here Christ is coming and giving us those sacraments, receiving us into His love and healing our soul and body. And He puts us on His animal and walks and finds an inn. What does the inn symbolize? The inn is this church. The inn is the church of Christ, where Christ, after coming down into the world, saving us, giving us the grace of His Holy Spirit, giving us the sacraments of His body and blood, giving us the sacrament of confession, giving us the sacrament of unction, He now leaves us in the church. And the innkeeper are those who minister in the church, are us who are responsible, who Christ gives two denarii, the Old and New Testament, all the witness of the prophets and of the apostles, and ask us to keep those testaments and use them to heal every single person that comes into the church. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. John Chrysostom, who was famously always mentioned several times that the church is a hospital. And in this way, the innkeeper is acting as a, someone who's there to be in charge, to take care of the sick. And the inn to be a hospital for those who come to Christ, who want healing. And Christ says, you have to take care. Use those two denarii until I come again. And that is His second coming. His, his coming in glory, when He will judge the living and the dead. So, this gospel should be a wake-up call for us. A wake-up call for us to live the commandments of Christ. Those who receive the witness of the Holy Scripture should recognize the Lord, unlike the lawyer. And they should also do His commandments. We are to function like the inn and the innkeeper for those, everybody that is hurt. We should come to the church because we acknowledge that we need the healing of Christ through His sacraments. And we should be mindful to have compassion on everyone that comes here. Just like we received compassion from Christ when He saw us on the side of the road. We should always remember the main purpose of this place is to be a hospital for all mankind that has been attacked and left for dead by the evil one. We should receive people with compassion, share God's mercy and love that we, that we have received ourselves and be good innkeepers so that when the Good Samaritan returns, we may receive our reward and be called good and faithful servants. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen.